Melvin Bragg presents a profile of German composer Karl Orff in the South Bank show tonight at 11. Now, though, Rick Mayle presents the big one. I swear. Lying is the only thing I'm really good at. Ha. Hello, darling. You're fabulous. Thanks. See what I mean? Until recently, my life was just a series of little lies. But always in the back of my mind was the dream that one day I'd get a chance at the really big one. You know? The lie that changes everything. We've all heard about it happening. But it's always to somebody else, you know, and it's usually in America. And then it happened to me. I couldn't believe it. It's a liar's dream come true. <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't really prepared for it, despite all the practice and the hard work. I mean, I got into some serious trouble back there. No, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> OK. <clears throat> it all started about two weeks ago in a pub in Shepherd's Bush. I just popped in for a quick half on my way to... No, hang on. No, I have to go back a bit, to a little earlier. 9.30 a.m., right? I was still in bed. Hello? <clears throat> no, of course not. I've been up for hours working. What do you mean, overslept? And what do you mean again? Listen. I... OK, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Hello? No, I was not going back to sleep. Look, I'm heading out of the door at the moment. <sighs> Hi, sorry I'm late. There's a poem in the high street. Louis! Shit. Louis, my dear boy. We've been having complaints lately about some of your descriptions of the properties we have for sale. Apparently, you've been straying from the strictly factual. But I thought you said you wanted me to use my imagination. Oh, I do, I do, I do, but it's, uh, it's running away with you, Lewis. And, and look, I applaud your attempt to create a sense of history, but I don't think it's wise to describe a semi in Eastern as the, as the one-time secret country rendezvous for Nell Gwynne's mother-in-law and her royal love. Yeah, but surely you don't want me to tell the truth. Now perish the thought, Lewis, perish the thought, but... But a relationship with the truth, even a distant one, is just such a wonderful asset. See, our job is to conjure up a picture in words. Imagine the property, sunset, the most perfect day of the year, seen through the rose-tinted glasses of a half-blind, complete moron. That's what we're after. Right, OK, I'll, I'll work on it. <sighs> Oh, uh, yes, um, yes, this, this uh, exclusive listing came in. It's, uh, it's a flat. It's in, in Docklands. I, I don't know the other um, This chap died in a boating accident a month ago. The, uh, the wife lives out in the country. She wants to unload the flat. This furniture there affects... Get down there. Make an assessment. Get on the market. I'll go straight down there. Trust me. Mm. Hello, Bob. Hi, Martin. How's the stock market? Oh, you know. One of those days, you win a million, you lose a million. Give me a pint. <laughs> pint to what? <laughs> Martin. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I thought you were somebody else. 
I'm so sorry. Embarrassing. Look, look, how can I make it up to you? Can I buy you a drink or something? Or lunch? All right. In New York. Sorry? In New York. I'm booked on the Concord in 40 minutes. Uh, we'll be back by tonight, I promise. I've got to work this afternoon. Of course you have. Right. I'm really sorry. Maybe tomorrow. Great. How can I get a hold of you? Sir, following an afternoon in the bookies on the Uxbridge Road, I finally got around to checking out the flat that Leon had told me about. Excuse me, sir. Can I help you? I'm going up to number 84. Shouldn't do that, sir. The bloke who lives there's dead. Fell off a boat and drowned. Yeah, I know. We saw a lot of that in the army. What, drowning? Dying. Oh, right. You should have seen what it was like at Goose Green. I did. What unit? Techero Militar. What? I was with the Arges. Undercover. How do you think we were able to pinpoint the Belgrano? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, nowadays I'm an estate agent. You saved the country from being overrun with Argentinians, and this is how they reward you. Yep. Go on up, sir. Thanks. See that to describe this place, I wouldn't need to stray from the strictly factual. I mean, to say that it was a superbly luxurious split-level apartment with fixtures and fittings of the highest quality would for once actually be true. <laughs> I mean, it was spacious, exclusive, ready for immediate occupation. This was an estate agent's dream. Oh, yes. To the discerning eye, this was a property full of possibilities. Dear boy, yes, tell me everything about it. Don't miss out a thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, Leon. I'll, I'll make it sound as good as I can, but I have to tell you, this really is a tough one. Oh. That bad, eh? Yeah, I mean, it's a white elephant. With the market in the city, soon, we'll never sell it. I'm so sorry, Leon. Well, I'll call you later. Hi, can I speak to you? Jules, please. Thanks. Hi, it's me, John Wilde. I kissed you accidentally in the pub earlier on. Hi. No, no, the plane was cancelled. There was a hurricane over the Azores, so... I'm stuck in London. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering if, uh, seeing as I'm free tonight, if maybe you fancy doing something. A club? Sure. Yeah. What about the place? No, we'll get in easily. It's not a problem when you're me. Thanks. 
kan? Iya. Thank you. Thank you. What? Right now, I'm the one who feels like an idiot. Today at the pub, I thought you were, you know. What, lying? <laughs> no, not exactly. More like exaggerating. <laughs> I mean, all that stuff about Concord. But now with all this, the way these people treat you, I don't even know what you do. Television. You work in TV? <sighs> well, it's more like people in TV work for me. A couple of years ago, I started dabbling in ITV shares, and now I find I own one of the major companies. <laughs> and how do you know which shares to buy? Just watch the programmes carefully. I mean, there are lots of hidden clues in there. See Coronation Street last night? I was out. Could have made £100,000. <laughs> God. What could be simpler? You get a huge stage, throw in some cheap scenery, a few rocks, a big black backdrop, then you put your two actors in those silly suits with wires attached to their backs, then you film the whole thing with a wobbly camera and you broadcast it to the whole world, which is precisely what they did. You have a better explanation? Yes, Miles. They built a huge rocket. They sent it into space. A little capsule popped off the top and landed. It wasn't faked by the CIA at all. Men really walked in the moon. And you think that's more believable? Thanks, sir. I mean, you don't really need more than one satellite in space. I just... Well, they wouldn't take the card. That is outrageous. I sent the check off at least five weeks ago. Your card is fine, Mr. Wilde. Oh. oh. Good. You look different, Mr. Wilde. Very different. No, no, I mean better or worse. Well, better. Good. Good, because it's cost a fortune. Even your voice doesn't sound the same, Mr. Wilde. Yeah. Comes from speaking a foreign language all the time. I just got back in England this morning. Be anywhere interesting? Just jumping from country to country. Sounds like business is good. Well, keeping my head above water. <laughs> the reason we're asking these questions, sir, is that we heard the rumour Mr. Wilde had drowned. I know. I know. Listen, I was the one that started the rumour. Now, do me a favour and keep it quiet. I've got to stay dead for tax reasons. OK? Thanks. And thanks for the champagne. Now, if you'll excuse us. Bye. Follow him. Why are we doing this? I thought you lived here. Yeah, I do, I do. It's just the job's was a bit weird. I hate lifts.